welcome students. So, uh, we were uh, discussing in our previous lecture about the preparation of the financial statements and uh, we learned that how to prepare the first part of profit and loss account that is the trading account and we will extend that account today and then we will try to know the how to prepare the profit and loss account. And again I am making the same format which we made yesterday by having two equal halves and we will prepare this account, we will continue. So, we are again writing it trading and profit and loss account of alpha associates of alpha associates for the year ending on if the year is given to you, you can write here that for the year ending on this much. So, we are not given any year here. So, we can have uh, these uh, different columns and this statement can be prepared. So, again as I made it yesterday, we are going to have the same statement, we are going to have here particulars. This is amount, again particulars and amount. So, this is the debit side and this is the credit side. So, when we prepared the trading account yesterday, we arrived at one figure here after putting certain figures here and two figures here or two or three figures here, we arrived at some figure and that figure was the 2 gross profit called as GP and the figure of the GP was 41,700 that we found out gross profit, gross profit because it is not the final profit to the owner of the or owners of the firm this is the gross profit against this, we will subtract some more expenses and we will add some more incomes. So, that profit will be finally calculated. So, now this gross profit will be because it is a income, excess of income over expenses, so it will be brought to the income side now. So, it is we will begin with the profit and loss account by transferring this gross profit to this side which is 41,700 by gross profit. This is the first income in the profit and loss account and we will take about the other heads of incomes means those items which have not been covered so far. We have already taken the sales, we have already taken the purchases, so forget it. We have taken the wages, so ignore it. We have taken the factory rent, already done, we have not taken the office rent. So, first head of indirect expenses to office rent, to office rent and this office rent is in this case is 20,000 rupees. This is office rent 20,000 rupees and then we have we have already taken the freight on purchases. So, we will take now the freight on sales to freight on sales is a indirect expense and freight on sales is 1500. Then we have opening stock we have already done, closing stock we have already done purchase returns we have already factored, sale returns we have already factored, salaries yes now we will take the salaries this is again indirect expense two salaries, two salaries and this is 6000 rupees. Then we are left with general expenses, two general expenses, general expenses these general expenses are 4500, 4500 then we have one item discount from creditors, discount from creditors is a discount earned or income earned. So, we will write here in the income side by discount from creditors by discount from creditors and this is the income discount means this is discount earned means to whom we had to pay we have we have got the discount from those customers and with those creditors and this amount is a income of 1100 rupees. And then as a we have this firm has received the discount, they are also paying the discount to their buyers. So, this is discount to discount 
to customers to discount to customers so this amount is 1800 rupees right so almost we have now covered all the items we have taken the sales purchase wages in the trading account yesterday in, in our previous uh, lecture then we have taken the factory rent we have taken the freight on purchases we have taken the uh, freight on sales today opening stock is already done closing stock is already done purchase return is taken in the previous discussion sale return is also also done in the trading account salaries we are taking today general expenses we are taking today discount from creditors we have taken today and then discount from to customers we have taken in the profit and loss account so now we have to total it up and see that which size is side is bigger and which side is small so i think this side seems to be bigger so income side is more than the expense side so it means this is 0 0 this is 8 this is 2 so this total of this side is 42800 this is 42800 is the so has to be this account has to be balanced like ledger account so this is net profit before tax because we are not given the tax information so far so it's a net profit before tax to be paid to the government so how much it is it this will will total it up on a uh, separate page this is 20000 then it is 1500 then it is 6000 it is 4500 and this is 1800 so this total works out as 000 then it is 8, 1, 2, 8, 3, 1 and it is 3. So, it is 33,800. So, total of the credit side is 42,800 and this side is 33,800. So, it means the net profit is uh, 0, 0, 0, 9,000 rupees. So, net profit before tax is the 9,000 rupees. So, this way we prepare the trading and profit and loss account. We generally call it as a profit and loss account, but it has two parts, right? It has two parts. First part is the trading account, which explains us about the direct incomes from the business. It means how the direct income is possible. We have taken yesterday in, in our previous lecture that is the sales, sales return, and then we have taken the closing stock here this these are the sources of the incomes and to generate that income how much expenses are required to be incurred here we have taken the uh, raw material we have taken the wages we have taken the other expenses we have taken the purchase return also so we have calculated a difference that income minus expense is the gross profit so basic difference between these two statements is here you take the direct exp direct expenses here you, you take the direct incomes right direct expenses are those expenses without which no business is possible. For example, any firm is a manufacturing firm, any firm is manufacturing uh, color TVs. So, whatever the expenses they are incurring on buying of raw material, paying the wages to workers on the plant and then the say uh, any, any other kind of the overheads like lighting, lubricants, oiling, fueling of the plant and everything, those expenses are called as direct expenses. It means without which any expense without which the production is not possible, those expenses are called as the direct expenses. and the output of those expenses is in terms of the sales. How much we have directly earned from the business that whatever the product we are manufacturing in this form, how much we have earned by selling that in the market number one and if there is something left unsold which will be sold in the future period that will be the this is the total output, this is the total input and the output minus input income minus expense is the gross profit. But this profit as I told you earlier is not the final profit against this profit we have to subtract some other expenses which are called as indirect expenses and we have to add some other incomes which are called as indirect incomes. So, we are transferring this profit because it is a profit it is a positive figure we are transferring it to this side. So, this is the first head of income and then we have added indirect incomes here discount from creditors. So, discount earned from the creditors is not a direct income uh, to the company is not a direct income from the business it is some. Uh, discount given by the suppliers who had to, to whom we had to pay they have given some discount so this is discount is also income discount earned is also income so we have to add this indirect income so total direct income plus indirect income is the total income and then from this total income you have to subtract some indirect expenses why we call them indirect expenses because without even these expenses production will be possible you can produce the product and you can 
for, for supporting the business you need these expenses to be incurred that is why they are called as indirect expenses. Upper part of expenses we discussed in the previous lecture are the direct expenses and then we calculate these are the indirect office rent. Even the office is not there you can have the production in the factory. Even uh, you have that uh, freight on the sales you do not pay the sales freight on the sales. So, you can not sell, but you can go for the production. So, freight on the sales is indirect expense. Similarly, salaries in the uh, to the employees working in the office is the indirect expense, general expense is indirect expense, discount given to customers is kind of a loss. So, since this account is a nominal account, profit and loss account is a nominal account. So, we take that loss into account here and that is means we are debiting the profit and loss account being a nominal account with all expenses and losses and we are crediting it with the all incomes and gains. So, it is a income, it is a gain, right? it is expense and this is a loss. So, we are debiting it. Finally, the net result is total of the income and gains minus total of the expenses and losses is the net profit before tax. We have not paid the tax to government. This company Alpha Associate has not paid any tax so far on this profit. If it comes in the preview of the tax, we will have to pay the tax on this and then Finally, for example, here the tax is uh, we, we assume that the tax corporate tax is 3000 rupees. So, your net profit to net profit after tax will be 6000 rupees. So, we will have to make a provision for the tax also if the tax is to be paid, but if the no tax is to be paid then you can say that even 9000 is the net profit after tax. So, this is the uh, initial means learning about how to prepare the financial statements and how to uh, prepare the first set of financial statements that is the trading and profit and loss account and then we will be uh, talking about the other uh, financial statements. So, just to help you to learn it properly, I would take up another small problem and there in that problem we would learn from the beginning and in this and go up to balance sheet. If you look at this problem. If you look at this problem, the information given here we have already taken care of and we have only prepared the trading and profit and loss account or you finally, you can say it is called as a profit and loss account also, it is called as a income statement also. So, we have been able to prepare only income statement not the balance sheet because the information given here is only sufficient for preparing the trading and profit and loss account, but balance sheet cannot be prepared. So, now we will learn how to prepare the balance sheet means including the trading and profit and loss account and the balance sheet. So, that it is clear to you that how to prepare the financial statements that is the first initial two statements that is the profit and loss account and balance sheet. So, now we will take up another problem and we will try to learn that how to prepare the balance sheet that is the profit and loss account and balance sheet. We will learn to prepare both. So, the, this is the is first we did a very simple problem. Now, we will also do another one, but we will prepare all the three statements trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet and for that I have another problem for you and this problem is now again we have some extended version of this problem and we will prepare from this statement. This statement you can call it as a trial balance also and what trial balance we learned in the previous discussion and previous lecture. We, you can say this is these are the balances uh, taken out in the form of the trial balance and we have uh, this information av available with us and you can prepare from this statement that trading and profit and loss account and the and the and the balance sheet. So, now we will as we did it in our previous lecture prepare the trading and profit and loss account. In this case also first we will prepare the trading and profit and loss account and then we will prepare the balance sheet. So, now uh, again do it and let us prepare the trading and profit and loss account and the balance sheet. So, here we talk about that we start with the as I started with the raw material. So, we will again start in this case that is with the raw material and the raw material in this case we start with is a 2 opening stock, 2 opening stock and the opening stock here is on the stock on the first January is 500 rupees. This is the again we are taking material, wages and other direct overheads we will be taking here. Then we will be taking 2 purchases, 2 purchases 
and our purchases are here we will put it in the inner column 19,500 and then is uh, if there is any purchase return we will have to look for the purchase return also and here it is written that is the return outwards. Return outwards is another name for the purchase return. Return outward is another name for the purchase return. So, we have to subtract it less return outwards return outwards and this amount is 250. So, part of the purchases we had the total purchases we had part of the purchases is returned. So, final balance of the purchases is 19,250 this is purchases. So, purchases so we have total material opening stock first we will consume then we will purchase from the market part of the material is returned. So, finally, we consume the material 500 plus the material for 19,250 rupees. Then the second head of the direct expense in the trading account is to wages. So, wages is 1400 wages is 1400 then we have any other direct expense insurance is not a direct expense so it is indirect we will take later on sundry debt is not carriage in words not uh, so yeah, carriage in word is a carriage on purchases yes two carriage two carriage in words carriage paid on the material coming in so purchases are coming in so carriage in words is 400 rupees carriage inwards is 400 rupees then commission is indirect interest on capital is indirect stationery is indirect expense return outward is return inwards is the sales return. So, we will take later on commission is not uh, now return outward we have already taken trade expenses indirect expenses office fixtures asset cash in hand not rent taxes carriage outward we have not to take sales now we have to take yes on this side we have to take the sales by sales. So, sales figure is by sales and sales figure is 25,000 rupees sales is 25,000 rupees and we have I think now the sales returns also. So, that is our returns in words returns in words is this is 6,650 rupees. So, less sales returns SR 650 rupees. So, it is 24,000 350 rupees is our sales figure finally and here closing stock we have to take and the closing stock is given here. So, closing stock we have to take that is by closing stock and this amount is 12,500 closing stock is 12,500. So, total is uh, 058 it is 6 and it is 6. So, it is 36,850 is total of income side and here also we have to make it equal. So, it is 36,850 and then it is 2 GP gross profit the difference of this minus all these expenses is the gross profit and here we have to take the expenses like we have taken the 500 rupees then we have to take the other expenses that is 19,250 then it is the 1400, 400 we have already taken and now the balance is the gross profit which is called as 1500 and uh, sorry 15,300 rupees. So, total of both the sides is 36,850, 36,850. So, we have taken here and we have prepared the trading account as we did it in the previous uh, problem. In this problem also we have prepared the profit and loss account and now we will move forward to prepare the we have prepared the trading account we will move forward to prepare the profit and loss account. So, it is by GP, GP will be now coming to the credit side and this credit income is credit side is 15,300 is the gross profit which we have taken this side. So, now we will be taking up talking about the other heads of expenses and incomes. So, now we have to take all indirect expenses all indirect expenses. So, if you take all indirect expenses here stock we have taken bill will not take. So, insurance indirect expenses here first is two insurance two insurance two insurance. So, this is 
this amount is 550 rupees. This is the insurance expense, insurance premium, Sunday data will not take carriage and words we have taken, commission, yes commission paid is we have to take. This is a commission because it is a debit balance, debit balance means commission given by the firm, so it is a kind of expense. So, it is 400 rupees commission, then we take the interest on capital, yes two interest on capital, interest paid on capital is the interest on capital and this amount is 350 rupees, we will take it. Then we have the expense to stationary, stationary we have purchased is for 225 rupees, then we have to take the return inwards, we have already uh, taken that 3650 commission credit, yes this is the indirect income by commission received now by commission you say in indirect income commission credit is 200 rupees then is the return outwards trade expenses again two trade expenses and the trade expenses are 100 rupees then we have office fixtures no cash in hand no cash at bank no rent and taxes yes then we have two rent and taxes, then we have two rent and taxes, so it is 550 rupees and carriage outwards, yes two carriage, say carriage on sales, carriage outwards, carriage outwards, so carriage outward is 725 rupees, then is the sales we have taken, bills payable will not take, creditors and capital we will not take. So, I think this is the total of our indirect incomes, the total of direct and indirect incomes and this works out as 0, 0, 5, 5, 0, 0, 5 and this 15,500 rupees is our total of the indirect incomes, 15,500 rupees and now we will have to calculate our net profit and net profit in this case will be that is 12,600 rupees which is now the total is 15,500 rupees. So, our net profit is you can call it as before tax or there is no tax then it is after tax. Net profit after tax is this is 12,600 rupees which is the final result of the business which is available to the owner of the business. right? So, the, this is how we prepare the profit and loss account, we did discuss in the last part of discussion also, we are discussing it today also. So, I think we have done two problems to prepare the trading and profit and loss account. So, how to do it, we have already done it and I think uh, you must be uh, clear to some extent why now that how we prepare the trading and profit and loss account. So, you must be wondering here that I have taken some of the items here and some of the other items here, but not all the items. So, what is the logic which items I have taken and which I have items I have left out? Items I have taken is because this account is only nominal account, in profit and loss account is a nominal account where we only take the expenses and losses this side, incomes and gains this side, right. So, we have taken all expenses and losses given here and incomes and ga gains given in this statement and we have prepared the profit and loss account with the help of all expenses and losses and incomes and gains. The items which I have left out is they are called as assets and second is the liabilities. So, assets and liabilities are not to be taken in the income statement, they will be taken into the balance sheet. So, for example, we have a bills receivables, they are assets. What are these? I will discuss with you in the next lecture. Similarly, you talk about the sundry debtors, again a asset. Similarly, if you talk about the uh, say uh, other, other we say our things like cash in hand, cash at bank is an asset, we will be taking that in the balance sheet. Similarly, if you talk about the bills payable, they are liabilities and likewise is the creditors, they are also liabilities and capital is again a liability on the business. So, I will be taking all these assets and liabilities in the next statement that is the balance sheet and in the profit and loss account so far, we have taken into account all expenses and losses on this side and all incomes and gain on this side and net result is first is the gross profit and finally it is the net profit. And next thing is that we have to learn how to prepare the balance sheet 
that I will be doing in the next lecture. Thank you very much.